because we put in like a lot of work and we were just super happy that we won but um, we, we also knew like at the end of the game that we still have one more match to go if we want to win and go to MSI so we just still have to practice. After 3 ing Immortals we were all just super excited. It felt even better than the C9 win because Immortals has been so dominant the entire split uh, but most importantly it really comes down to, we still have another game. You no, know, we can celebrate, but not for too long because we have to get straight back into practice. We have to go to Vegas. We still have to play CLG. So there's no time to be complacent or, you know, we just have to continue to work as hard and hopefully put up an equal or better performance in Vegas. Thinking back to last year's final, um, it feels really different because CLG had a different roster, we had a different roster. Really, I still feel like it's just two really completely different teams and I don't see much correlation. But like WF said, CLG versus TSM final is a WF sided matchup, so hopefully we'll come out ahead. Well, beating TSM last was pretty fun. Like Leading up to it, I knew for sure we were going to win. This time, I have a very similar feeling, just like full confidence in my team that we're going to win. Like, I just kind of remember last year it was just, all right, I can have a bad game, my team will pick it up because this is like a real team, you know, if I'm messing up, then somebody else is going to play out of their mind that game. I have the same feeling on this team where like everyone at any moment can just like go off and do something really good. I don't know, just, I don't even really remember the games against TSM. I just remember they, they felt so easy. It sounds super cocky, but like, it wasn't like, I was never had to. I never had to put full effort into the moment. I was only thinking about like, oh, how can I, how can I make this easier for my team because it's like a full-on team game. Sometimes you have to step up and like really focus on what you're doing. But for us, it never really worked out during the regular split. So um, I guess it'll just come down to who prepared harder. But I think we did. Would that actually help? <laughs> I don't know why it would hurt. Huh? It wouldn't hurt. Better still look you. No, but just say we got a lot better, but then when we come back here, we'll just be streaming on worst teams anyway. Well, it's like, it's only two weeks. I don't weeks. want you guys to burn out. It's only two weeks. Oh, really? It's going to end up MSI in two weeks, and this foot starts. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so we go to MSI, we don't have a break. Between playoffs and MSI. We would have to plan, we'd have to plan everything in advance, though. So. Look, when's MSI after Vegas? Uh, it's two weeks out of the I don't even really think we should start thinking about MSI until we beat CLG though. I think yeah. CLG's match is going to be really hard. Yeah. CLG's not going to take us lightly. I mean, we're not taking us uh, They're going to be way harder than the world. Makan 9 and Immortal took us lightly. Uh, Wait, Cloud 9 took us lightly? Yeah. I don't know. What? Yeah. I don't think Immortals is like fucking around. Why are you on safe? I don't know. Wait, what? Lucian, have you?
playoffs took place in Las Vegas. Uh, it's not the first time that I was attending an event over there. I remember back then, maybe like three, four years ago, when I played IPL4. It was one of the fancy destination that I could attend playing video games. Uh, it's crazy because when you talk about Las Vegas, you're like expecting to have like some crazy parties, uh, having fun, uh, all of this. But we actually went there to compete and that's about it. Since we're three people below 21, we couldn't really do anything there. And since we're there for a tournament, it's not like like you see in all the movies where you go there to like party and drink and stuff. So uh, we're actually there for a tournament, so we couldn't really like use the time except seeing like the venue and the hotel. Thank you, Doi, mate. Actually, wait. So, Bjerg is this down here. Doesn't even have to be here. Kevin's up. Wait, isn't that the party? Yeah, then Kevin down. And then Kevin here. Bjerg here. Wait, just sit next to Kevin. Okay, then Dennis right here. Dennis right here. Oh, and Dennis. Dennis right here. Dennis right here. Dennis right here. Dennis right here. Dennis right there. Wait, what? What? Wait, sorry, original. What? There's no door. That's so weird. <laughs> Is it weird that I need to pee? Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> unnatural, <laughs> Peter. Sorry, guys. Unhuman. Disgusting. Did somebody get lean out of here? Why would you do this? This is a boys only club. <laughs> How's that weird? <laughs> Look, guys. How could you, Peter? With all of us knowing. With all <laughs> well, the no secret's out, guys. That's good. It's in a performance anxiety test. Can he do it with his whole team watching? Well, Listen, watching. always. <laughs> oh my gosh. Austin. Let's shop this chair. <laughs> what are you doing? You <laughs> fucking little. <laughs> oh my god. Good, Dennis. You're so good. Oh my god, back and forth. Oh my god. Put the leg out there. Oh. After the Immortals game, we played on Sunday, I think. So we only had like three days of practice. We had uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we had to fly out. And once when we got to the venue, we got like pretty little practice. I think we got like maybe four or five hours of scrims. So. There's not much time to change things up since the Immortals game for either team. We basically spent most of the time just like traveling, setting up, um, testing things on stage, and stuff like that. I'm gonna package on them now. We kept doing the same thing as we did against Cloud9 and Immortals, even though they had a different side we were like pretty much convinced that it was rather up to us playing well and performing on stage rather than like really us adapting. But overall, uh, the preparation was the same and it's just a matter of execution. We have one day of practice left against Immortals, so it'll be like four or like six or seven games, I think. Do we want to? I think CLG's priorities on Nidalee changed in the TL series after the first game. Do we ever want to leave it up? I don't think it's like. like I think I it's possible for sure. Sure. They're gonna do it one game. Not a lot. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's like. They're shred, like, yeah. they're sure they might try it, but these are all like super unlikely scenarios that we just have to account for. Yeah, so in terms of picks, that's all it is. Um, 
they do something crazy on stage, then we'll just talk about it and figure it out. But these are like all the common, super uncommon scenarios that I have to note. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to go over is you guys have worked like pretty hard for the last three weeks, and I don't know. You guys have put out a lot more work than like anyone else has. So regardless of what people say, like Andy stepping in is like you guys have done most of the work, and playing against CLG, it's more going to be about how we play our game rather than like countering their game. The only thing that CLG does is they're going to probably pick normally, and then the difference between them and Immortals is they put sticks in mid instead of bow belter, and Afrim will pretty much play similarly. So as long as we play like we've been playing in scrims, um, and we remind each other when we make mistakes, and we follow calls, and if, if you're ever frustrated in a game and Call is not be followed. Just remind remind the team that you guys just need to be on the same page. And if we're on the same page, we should beat CLG 100%. No matter what, like yeah, champions is fine or whatever. Like even if we have slightly better or worse comp, it's not gonna make or break the game. It's just how we play. You know how we're gonna win? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I don't have a good reason. <laughs> because we did all that good fan we service had at breakfast today. Yeah, best breakfast. Even the best. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, Hansri, he just plays by the things to the team. And Sven, the best thing about Sven is that he always makes sure that Bjergsen's in. Of course, he just saved you that lane. Always making and sure Bora too, line. Bora is just another one of your pets. <laughs> Coming to camp your lane early game. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Gotta make sure this background of the list is ahead. Honestly, disgusting. Dank memes can't know play off dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Mandalay Bay in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and to the hordes of League fans all over the world, this battle is about to explode! They took down the number one seed, they took down the number three seed. If they beat CLG, they beat the top three seeds uh, from the split to win, which would just be ridiculous. Yellow taking damage to the front line, in comes Hotak, Solos gets off Uhi, and here comes the rest of the fight. Keener keeps him alive for a little while longer, but it's a double for Dolan. They need the pop. Oh, they can re-engage! Looking for the play, the big knock of an out goes Brom! Here comes the battle, who he forced holds away. Zonia's on from Svenskeren. Oh, Zonia's Why are we going to be like? I can re-engage! I can re-engage! I can re-engage! I can A kill and a hooey. TSM tried, but they can't get it. It's a two for one. Meanwhile, minions are inside the base. Both teleports are up as well. And this DLG have to make a choice. Kirkson, Kirkson, Kirkson no. goes into the back line. He's, he's got to run. It. He's got to run. Yes. And it's oh. not going to be enough. The it. minions <laughs> live up to their name. Afro Moo making the game winning push thanks to the banner, thanks to the delay. Good game, CLG. And that was just the first game Woo! in this series. I think I messed up pretty bad that game when it came to like lane allocation and uh, like just mechanically playing the side lane well. Like in a bunch of skirmishes, I, I fucked up pretty bad and then we should have been able to win off that. And then not only that, but our lane allocation, which I'm usually in charge of, was not optimal. So, yeah, I think most of that game was on me to win it, but I just 
didn't make the right decisions and I messed up too much, so it kind of sucked. That game was just, yeah, pretty demoralizing. Yellow start down a bit low, binding hits Bjergsen for some decent damage. Oh, In comes Darshan, taking a lot of damage, get the shield back up, and nearly kills on the Alice, but now to run away. The knock on Serena, who's gonna, what? Hunts or it's nobody at all, and the re-engage comes in Bjergsen. It's two kills so far, make that a third of two, he goes down, oh. and nothing for Xmithy, a four for zero. Can Poppy stop Rex from getting it? No, she Smithy's cannot. In. They're inside the pit. Still. Plenty damage down, Echo pops the ulti, now Xmithy is stuck inside the pit. Nice, nice. finish, bear, 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 bear. Corky, Corky, Corky! Finish him! Echo, Echo! Echo, Echo, Echo! 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 Echo, he plays middle tanks to a T, baby. <laughs> tanks to a T. Good job. All right, guys. Relax, guys. That's one on one. All right, let's just let's just go back and talk after this game. Yeah. They stayed with their mid strategy the whole game. They were just up and down that mid lane. COG could not split push, could not team fight. TSM takes it to one one. The individual plays triumph. Another great game from Bjergsen and the rest of TSM. This happened one time this game, and Haunter did it, was, Haunter, focus, this happened one time this game that you guys need to do every single time. Do you guys remember where you guys are all middle and you guys are clearing creeps? And he said, wave in 20 seconds. And then you guys all rotated and you guys dove echo. And then you guys got the tower even though you guys didn't kill him. That's what you guys need to be, do, be doing for every single tower. Even diving. That's something that you guys aren't doing. Like, hey, come in 10 seconds, I'm pushing slow. Like, everything needs to be communicated. So focus on all the small things. You guys are like, Skipping all the small steps because you guys think that your teammates know, and then and then it's actually making us play bad. Yep. So if you guys don't skip those small steps, it would help a lot. No, guys, it's fun. super hard important for us to win a purple side game. Focus on clean play more than anything. That will be the difference between pretty much all other games. Like we're playing a lot cleaner than the first game, so this game should even be more clean. It all goes through communication. Whenever CLG deems necessary, sticks in after a round. They almost got the Q binding. On the here comes the flag. Lock up the double hit, and here comes the Borlo to save him for now. But is there enough re-engage? I don't think so. They're trying to get away. Smithy does hop out, but there's the deletion. Caitlyn is gone. Now a 4v5 into the back line goes who he picks up double up and holds right back out. But Darshan Ooh. is still wreaking havoc in the backside, looking for more. Yellow starts low, and Smithy's low. A double kill though for who he, and he's gonna keep on going. Smithy running, running and bouncing for his life. Again to the back line, who he goes down to a turret and a Hauntzer. But the chase continues in. Darshan gets yet another, a three for two in the favor of CLG. Oh, the flash no! misses from Hauntzer. Flash away from Aframu and Darshan just doesn't take damage anymore. Where's the big play gonna come in? They knock in the team, Afro's left alone. He's gonna put the ulti in and stay alive for now. And Svenskaren's dangerously close to death. But Double gets the first kill. The 5v4, CLG looking to go back in. Ulti from Yellowstar, haunts her dangerously low though. Who he has to go back in to stay alive. Almost gets double if Yellowstar low as well. Double with the second kill of the fight. And there's another kill. Hold on, Caitlyn didn't hit Peter. I think we lost. Wow. GG. I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's gone for sure. Alright, well... What do you guys think we should do differently? I think our team fighting, we're way too split. Okay, anyways, let me, let me tell you guys why we lost that game. So, first off, they had a winning bot lane that pushes us in the whole game. Poppy also pushes in Gragas and literally fucks Graves early, early, early game too. Because they pushed us all in, they can get vision and just apply pressure. And they're mainly winning because they have double teleport and they're, they're outspell pushing us, right? Be they're outspell pushing us because we don't have any person that can sideline push deep at all. Because Poppy outpushes Graves top and Echo outpushes anyone on the sideline. So what we need to do for the next game is we need to pick first pick Poppy and have someone that can push hard on the side lane, that won't lose.
They saw him mid lane, so they make a quick push on bottom. Nice, some minion teleport advantage. Here, Here comes. comes the play. Ezreal comes across. They land a stun and a double hit. A whole lot of damage piled in. Sticks is still putting it in, and the kill is picked up for CLG. Oh, but they've traded back. Yeah, Smithy did fall down, and the turret's still hitting. Who he's taking a lot of damage for this one. They've got to be careful because Kraken is still pushing the top lane. Here's and in on Lulu the way is coming down. They want the gold card to fall down. Then he'd go. Four for it. Three going for these assassins. won't get it. They stun up Svenskeren. The re-engage. The Glitterland picks it up. DSM with a two for one of that fight. While Greg is still pushing the top lane. He's recalling in safely. He's gone. Sean is actually very vulnerable. They're thinking about it. That's There's a the teleport. teleport for Twisted Fate. You get ult in afterwards. TP Afro. coming in from Lulu. This is the team fight. But look at the damage star Sean's taking. A bard ulti buys some time. Counter Logic gaining. Stuns up Dublin. But they've already killed up Afrobu. And our Sean in the front line taking so much punishment. They cannot kill up Dublin. That's Two kills, three kills for TSM. Counter-Logic Gaming are running, but they get popped up like a beach ball. And this is going to be who he next up on the front lines. A double kill for double -lift. Now it is Nick Say. His replacement will be going down. Reds might get some and ace for TSM. Game five, baby. TSM are going to push up the top lane and take us there. So game five, gentlemen. Do or die time for both teams coming in. CLG now, the recent loss on their minds. I think that their drafts are solid. Their team play is excellent. They just need to kind of stick to their guns. And I mean, when it comes down to it, this is for a North American Championship, right? You have to play well. You can't just draft. It can't just be theory craft. You need to have the total package. And if CLG wants to win, that's what it's got to be. The first big risk that CLG would be making by the Rage Blade. And they even it's going who really the fast. Mid lane. And TSM are reacting. They've got Darshan back in base for a teleporter. They need it. No Here comes though. the attempted play. After we have to zone out Svenskeren. That's Baron Nasher picked up by Smitty the second time in a row. The knockback onto the team and an early pop on the Kidder ulti. Here comes the re-engage. Yellow Star's the first kill. Darshan's back into it on a Haunter. Sticks say jumping away. But Bjergsen wants him. A couple of kills going back and forth. Smithy also down. Haunter staying alive, and the team is running away. CLG lost two. Nice. Alistar, Alistar, Alistar. I'm on Lulu, I'm on Lulu. I'm on Lulu, I'm on Lulu. Go, 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 go. Okay. What else is on? How about Triss? Triss, 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 Triss. Triss, one HP, Triss, one HP. Go, Triss, go, Triss. Echo, Echo, Echo. 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 Baron after. Can we go Baron? And he goes down! Oh, three marksmen up for DSM! Really, this dragon is about getting positioning for the team fight. TSM got it, that's number three. And the traps are already up. They're already yeah. there too soon for Hunter. to respond. And here comes Hauntzer, looks for the play, gets headbutted, and gets pulverized around. They knock in Stick Say, but he's gonna be Good all right with this up. one. Now into the front line, Hauntzer taking so much damage. Gonna get saved by Kunit for now. Now they've gotta wait for the Rapid Fire to be back up. In goes them against Echo, 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 Echo. Echo. Kai, 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 Kai! Trist, Trist, Trist! Come Trist! Trist, watch them! No, Lulu, I'm low, I'm low, I need to heal, I need to heal! Play on Peter, play on Peter! He's up, he's up, he's up! Derek, he's up, he's up! I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! They're gonna turn in! It's just you, it's just you! Lulu, SCP! Oh shit, oh fuck! That's good! That's good! Well, it's okay, guys. We did our best. To put the faith on the rookie, the Rage Blade Tristana from Stixay. Put it all in his hands. Give him the rapid fire. Give him the resets. And give him his first ever North American Championship in his first season on CLG. Perfect shit. Oh, I should go see them, huh? Uh, in the final team fight, I was actually, yeah, I was mulling over my mistake. I think I got comboed and I QSS this flash, but if I held my QSS or at least Kuhn, it would have been better. But I don't know. Every single fight, I'll kind of 
dwell on the past for about a few seconds and then the thing that I've always trained is just moving on and just like trying to figure out what's next. In the very losing moment though, there's not very much that comes next. You know you're just gonna lose for sure. Uh, especially since I was like, I think either the second to last one or the very last one to die. So I don't know, not a lot was going through my head. I was just like, damn, this sucks, we lost. Um, but then I just said, it's okay. Cause we, we all did our best, we all tried our best. And in a series like that, like, just a few small changes, just like one person making a different decision on our team or one person on the enemy team making the wrong decision would have completely changed the outcome of the series. And that's like probably the most painful part about it because I know that I could have made different decisions and just one small change would have potentially won us the whole series. And I think everyone on the team feels the same way. I think Parth, Andy, and all the players think the same way which is why it just like sucks so bad to lose that way. Still doing it inside, gonna rep a region. Fuck my life. Are you just off now? What? We have nothing, right? Mm -hmm. That's so depressing. Maybe we should take a two week break. No, he says I get a little. She's so though. You're bored, cheer up here. No, we should just. Yeah, I know we have pretty big issues right now, but I think it's like everyone's so depressed, I don't even want to like... Oh, well, not right now, but... There's no point in me calling you guys out on it, you know? But I do think that our draft was, um... I don't, I, I just don't know why I could have told you guys in between games to help win, because I think that overall our play was just off, really, really off against CLG. We couldn't, we couldn't pull up that off dive spot. We couldn't rotate correctly. We couldn't see properly. Um, we didn't team fight well. Yeah, I think we just had a really, really off series. That's like we played a lot worse than usual. All right, we should pack up. It was definitely one of the tougher losses for me to get over. Uh, last year at MSG, we kind of got stomped pretty hard. So it was just an immediate of, wow, I'm just really sad. But then it was like, we just kind of got crushed. So this time it was really, really close and we almost had it. So I was really sad just, actually just for hours, I felt really kind of shitty towards the people around me that I was just being so emo and so depressed. But I also knew that everyone else on my team was really sad about the games. and. I know everyone had the same things going through their head as I did. Uh, we went out and got some food and people were a lot more quiet than usual. People weren't talking as much, but I think slowly as we got food, people warmed up and slowly got over it a bit more. I didn't give a fuck when we it's lost the world. It's because after Hello Talk shit? No. 
I don't even care. It's because we fucking lost, and it was this close. Have you guys played the team fight better? It's it's, di it's totally different if they're just a straight up better team than you, and that's why they won. Sorry. I know. I felt like the plays that they made would only work if we mechanically messed up or we would just ace them and win the game. But we just kept mechanically messing up over and over and over. Yeah, after we lost, I was just really sad and just like contemplating what we could have done, like what's going to happen in the future for probably about like the whole next day. And after a while, it just became like normal. Like I kind of accepted it later. It's just like, yeah, we lost. We have to do better next time. Yeah, so losing always really sucks because especially like when you made it this far and we actually made it to game five so all the hard work we put in to the whole uh, like playoffs we really dedicated ourselves to really just do our best and win the playoffs so being this close but still losing like really sucks and uh, kind of just making it to game five was even worse than just like getting stumped because like you'll just look back in time and always be like okay if we just practice like a little bit more or if we did something else like you like we got this close so yeah we could have definitely won. I think the team should still be happy about how many improvements we made in the last couple of weeks and thinking of if we didn't make those improvements where we would be if we had just immediately lost to C9 how much of a failure this split would have felt like. Even for me now a couple days after the loss and immediately after the loss the split still feel, felt like a complete failure, but um, slowly you start to see all the offsides and all the good things that we did and all the good things that we can hopefully bring on to the next season. And I think if we can keep the whole next split as productive as these last couple of weeks, we'll be a much better team for sure. Hi everyone, uh, you might be surprised about my choice, but um, it was not, e not really easy for me to decide um, to go back to Europe, but it was a long thought process. And I actually talked about my situation to the management uh, in this season. As you know, we didn't have the best uh, performances. Uh, we didn't meet our expectations during the regular split. We needed to go through a lot of um, issues. Uh, we worked really hard in order to perform at playoffs. And we had to make sure that uh, we would show up at playoffs. And fortunately, we made it to the second place. Um, it was with a lot of work. We struggled a lot during the first uh, weeks of the LCS and I was a part, a big part of the problem and I was wondering a lot if it was my fault and how I was affecting the team. Um, so even before practicing for playoffs, I asked the management what I could do better after a lot of thinking. And I even asked if it was a good decision for me to step down and let someone else maybe being replaced or not. But it was a really short amount of time right before playoffs. So we came to a conclusion that it would be the best for the team for me to continue and give it everything. So we might have a shot to actually win the spring split. And fortunately, we managed to take the second place. So I was really happy about the team, the players that work really hard. The choice about me uh, wanting to go back to Europe is not about us having issues personally, internally, uh, in terms of relationship, because everyone in the house, I get along really well with all the players and I've, I spent, uh, I, I had a re really good time with them. Uh, we were doing a lot of stuff uh, aside of playing, even though we were practicing a lot. 
and I'm, I just wouldn't think that I would miss Europe that much because it's the first time that I'm living abroad and Reginald was also respecting my choice and he's making sure that he's trying his best to help me out. Um, I find it fantastic that he's willing to give me a chance to return to Europe even though it's, it might hurt the team because it's been like three months already in the season and we've been putting a lot of efforts. Um, I talked to him that if it really hurts the team and you guys don't find someone else then I'm willing to continue playing for the team because um, I see how everyone work really hard. They do the best they can. So if we were not finding a replacement for to fill the spot, then I would be glad to help out the team. Coming into 2016, um, you guys saw the roster and you had a lot of expectations about TSM performing really well. Um, it was a matter of time. Um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you didn't lose hope. You were, were still supporting us. We could see it uh, through social medias and I really appreciate that. It helps a lot when you're going through tough times and you were many like writing kind messages, encouraging us. So it gives a lot of motivation. Um, I think all the players, the staff, the coach, um, you don't see how hard they're, they're working and they're trying to make sure that uh, the team is performing and you guys should keep cheering. And I believe that this team has a lot of potential and I wish the best. So you guys should keep supporting them. And thank you for the support, even, th even though we didn't live up to the expectations during the regular split. <laughs>